Our Father, we thank you. We bless and honor your name. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Lord, open our hearts, even as we receive from you this morning. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for this day. And this opportunity has given us to hear from his word. Today, we are finishing the series on stewardship. We started on tithing. Then we learned about principles of giving. And last Sunday, we were looking on the principles of sowing and reaping. And today is thanksgiving. For all what God does to us, we need to be thankful. And we will learn how we are supposed to be thankful. But there is a question that came to me on the tithe. Somebody told me, you taught us about tithing when you are earning as an employed person. What about somebody who has a business? How do you tithe? As you earn, we learned that you tithe from the gross. On business, you tithe from the increase. Whatever is your profit, that is assuming that you, have, you had tithed your capital. Assuming that you had tithed your capital, then now you tithe from the increase. Uh, what I have covered so far is what is in the, in the CD that are still available at the information tent and at the bookstore. Now, today, we are going to study about uh, Thanksgiving. And there is a story here, Luke chapter 11, the story about the ten lepers. Uh, these ten lepers, of course they had this terrible skin disease called leprosy. It is a serious sickness, skin disease, in which sometimes you lose even your fingers, you lose your toes, and nobody actually wanted to be with somebody who had leprosy. Because if you touch such a person, you become unclean. Yourself, you become unclean. And if somebody had leprosy in the family, he had to be kicked out of the family. No wonder how much you love that member of your family, you had to kick the, the person out. Luke 17, verse 12, we read, as he was entering a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. What do we learn by that? It means they had already been thrown not only out of their houses, but out of the village. Because such a person was an outcast in the society, even in your home. We read in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes. Let their hair be unkept. Cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. That was the law that time. And no wonder some ten wives and their children had thrown out these ten fathers. And so they were living there out in the streets. But I see they had a very good fellowship. You see, if one wanted to go anywhere, 
of course not to visit anyone, maybe sightseeing, they will all go, to go together. Whatever they did, they did together. It was a good fellowship. Kenyans must learn from it. They were not asking you what is your tribe. You know Kenyans are very tribalistic. Like sometimes when I tell my people my name is Manje, they start going all over the country. Is it coast? Is it from western? Those are Kenyans. These ten lepers did not ask each other what is your tribe. Neither were they political. What were we asking our friends last year? Are you ODM? Are you NAS? Is that what we were asking? These people didn't care what party you came from. They had all things in common. Such a fellowship. Let me say, when they went to Jesus, Bible says, Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priests. Go show yourself to the priest. And one of the things the priest would have done is to confirm that they are well so that their wives can receive them back. Let me tell you, these people had faith. They didn't ask Jesus, Jesus, you know the law. We have first of all to get healed so that we can go to the priest for the priest to announce that we are well and then we are accepted back to our homes. They didn't argue with Jesus. Knowing that they still had leprosy, they started walking to the temple to see the priest, for the priest to announce their healing. But as they were walking, they realized that they were well. Bible says, as they went, they were healed. They were healed as they went. Jesus is God. He heals. He heals even from a distance. Even on a word like that, he healed. But what happened? When they received their healing, we are told that only one went back to Jesus. Not to do anything but to say thank you. Just to thank him. And Jesus asked, were you not ten? Where are the nine? Is it only this one who is a foreigner that came back to say thank you? Many times when Jesus did, God does something to us, we forget to say thank you. But what do you think about these nine? What happened to them? Maybe one may have said, let me sleep over the night and in the morning when I confirm that I'm well, then I'll go to Jesus. That is not faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. And Jesus said, should you have a need? Pray. Believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Maybe another one may have said, in fact, I had so much improved. So it's not a big deal. I, had, I was almost healed. And how come they were out there for all those years? We forget after God has done something to us. Maybe the other one gave glory to the priest, not to Jesus. Priests like us, we don't heal. Ours is to pray. It is God who heals. And maybe another one, because he was thrown out of his home for a long time, he was busy forming a committee for his homecoming party after having been thrown out for a long time. To him, that is what was very important. He forgot what Jesus had done for him. Let me say that all gifts from God should point us back to God and should cause us to give thanks to God. All gifts, all good things come from God. And we should trace it back to God. There has been a lot of handshakes. And the main handshake that we saw, have you traced it back to God? Or was it by chance? Do you see God in it? He's there. We need to thank God and we know all what happened after that. 
John Rockefeller was the very first person to reach the status of a billionaire. And he was a man who knew how to set his goals and how to follow it through. At the age of 23, Lockefeller became a billionaire. And at the age of 50, he became a billionaire. But three years later, when he was only 53, he became unwell. His entire body was full of pain. He lost all his air. And in complete agony, the only world billionaire could not do anything for himself. He could only digest milk and biscuits. And associate of him said he could not sleep, would not smile, and nothing in life meant anything to him. Nothing completely. But at one time, he woke up in the morning and he remembered a dream he had. He could not remember the exact details of the dream. But, it, that the, the, but the message in the dream is that he cannot take what he has into the next life. And so what he did, he called his attorneys, he called his accountants, Rockefeller called his managers, and announced that he wanted to channel his assets to hospitals, to research, and to mission work. And on that day, John Rockefeller established the Rockefeller Foundation. I think there is even an office here. Now, this new direction completely led to the discovery of penicillin. And that's how drugs for malaria and tuberculosis were able to be discovered. The list of his discovery resulting from his choice is anemias. But perhaps the most amazing part of Lockefeller's story is the moment he began to give back a portion of all what he had, he had earned, his body chemistry was altered so significantly that he, 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 got, he got better. It looked as if Lockefeller was to die at 53. Lockefeller died at 98. And it was just because he learned of giving gratitude to God and giving back out of what he had. I saw one of his quotations. Rockefeller said, had I not learned to tithe from my weekly salary of one and a half dollars, I would not be able to tithe from my billions today. Second Corinthians 9 and verse 11 says this. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your, your, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Yes, we need to give thanks to God for everything. Rockefeller became well, and instead of dying at 53, he died at 93. Let me say this, that the children of Israel always complained of what they didn't have. They didn't thank God because of what they had. And even us today, we are still complaining of what we do not have. I think I learned a lot when in 2010, when I was serving in this church. And then I relocated to go and serve in Trokana. And I had read that year that Trokana is the poorest community in Kenya. And I remember when the provost called me in front there with my family. They laid their hands on my family and we were sent to Trokana. The moment I left that door, some people came to me and told me, did you pray well on this issue? <laughs> Where is that you are taking your family? What will your children eat? Where will they go to school? But I told them, I know the children in Rokana are eating. They are going to school. And the Lord will take care for us. And when we reached there is when I learned what really what poverty is. You see, 
even in our churches there, we don't have such structures. You only look for two trees that will give sufficient shade, and that is a church. And as we, I taught them how to give, but I remember when you announced the offer to him, the next thing you see them begging each other. Just by announcing the offer to him, they start begging each other. They are that poor. And that is when I learned that um, an empty stomach has no ears. We don't start ministering there to the heart, you start with the stomach. But based on that, let me share with you a few things as I conclude. On things that we take for granted, I can no longer, having lived in Trokana for almost four years, I cannot take it for granted. First thing, do you thank God because of your house or because of your home? You may ask now, Pastor, what is that you're asking? I put up my house many years ago and we prayed for it. We thank God for it. Is that all? Let me say this. I, I, I was surprised my first time to visit New York. To see people sleeping under the bridges in New York. To see people sleeping in park benches in New York. I've heard of New Delhi and Bombay. People sleeping on the sidewalks. They have no homes at all. We have many people here who have no homes. In Trokan, actually, they sleep outside. That's where they sleep. Do you thank God that you have a house or you have a home? Secondly, do you thank God because you have a meal, you have food? Of course, you have plenty to eat in your homes. Many people don't have that plenty. And even out there in America, I remember driving from one place to another and I found people with a billboard saying, we work for food in America, in the West. Even here, people are hungry. I remember when I went to Trokana, I always kept a bag of maize and a bag of beans in my house. When I'm going interior, I had to carry some. I had to carry water. Because on the way, you find Trokanas lined up with empty water bottles. They, they, they were saying, a gippy, a gippy is water, a gippy, a gippy. And I would stop, fill those bottles, and then proceed on. What about clothes? Are you happy that you don't worry about whether, about the clothes you are going to put on? You know you have enough of them. Many people have only the clothes they are waiting, putting on. I remember I could come here and people here were so generous. They would give, some, one time I got 20 sacks of clothes, and as, as I took them interior, I would stop, they would get finished on the way before I reach where I was taking them. Because you find naked children of the way. You, 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 you stop and fast, you clothe them. And you have a lot, maybe even now you are keeping to your home, which should be a blessing to people somewhere. Are you, do you thank God because of your health? And with the health challenges that are there today, we don't know what we are carrying in these bodies. We don't know. I think for the last three months, my four friends have been diagnosed with cancer. Three of them are right now in India. We don't know what we are carrying in these bodies. Do you thank God that you are well? What about our country, Kenya? Do we only criticize it? Are you thankful that we live in a country where there is great freedom? In many countries, you, have, you don't have much freedom. In some countries, you are put to prison or even to death for telling people about Jesus. I remember attending an Anglican conference on evangelism in Cyprus, and I came across this young man from India, a missionary in Nepal, and he told us that in Nepal, it's illegal to ask somebody to change your faith, which means no evangelism. You can't evangelize. He told me that they do friendship evangelism. You go there as a doctor, as an engineer. Do you thank God for the teachers who have brought you to where you are? Teachers in school, teachers in the word of God in church, do you thank them? Do you thank God that they have brought you and you can now live a happy and successful life? 
Do you thank God because of your friends? Instead, in fact, in this area of friends, so many times we forget about the friends we have, that we don't thank God for them. Remember when you lost your spouse. Remember when you lost your, your family, your, your, your parents. Remember when you lost your son or your daughter, the way people stood with you, the way they gave so much because of you. Do you thank God because of them? I have seen people blessing others even with a vehicle. My, myself, where I live here in Nairobi, I live in one acre land that was given free by a friend. We need to thank God. Maybe you have a lot of testimony that you can tell. Thank God for what he has done and who has provided. About the family, do you thank God that you have a lovely wife? And husbands, did you book for mom? I asked you to do that last week. Do you thank God because of a lovely husband? Do you thank God because of the children God has given you? Do you thank God for them? Friends, I have so many things. I don't have much time for it. Do you thank God for your, for your parents and all that? I would not have been here preaching to you now unless because of my, my parents, especially my mother who prayed for me and I was so much in the world, but he never, she never gave up. She prayed that there would be a priest from her family. Do you thank God because of Jesus? He died because of you? He laid his life because of you? Do you thank God because of the Holy Spirit who come to lead you into all truth, who give you strength to live your Christian life? Let me close because of time. I close with the story of this lady who was working in a mall, in a big mall. And they normally get time at 10, 10 o'clock to go and have tea, tea break. And so this one day, as she went for her tea break, she took a magazine and put it in a bag to go and read it as she takes her coffee. And she, 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 she stopped in a stall and bought a, uh, cookies, a packet of cookies. And she went to a cafeteria. She bought herself a mug of coffee. And she looked for a place to sit. And as she was sit, looking for a place, she found one table where there was only one person. And so she sat there and uh, opened the, 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 the mug of the coffee. And she started drinking her coffee, reading her magazine. She took one cookie and ate it. When she took the first cookie, the man on the other side also took a cookie and ate. And then she was asking, what kind of a man is this? He has no courtesy. Every time he, she takes a cookie, the man will also take a cookie and eat. She was not happy about it, but she didn't say anything. She was asking what time she would go back to the office to tell her colleague, a person who has messed her day. Now, this man, this woman looked and he saw there was one cookie remaining. And this man looked and saw there was one cookie remaining. The man took the cookie broke it into two, gave the lady one, <laughs> and ate the other. This time she was boiling with anger. And the man, when he finished, he, he wrapped up the, 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 the wrappers and, 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 and waved the lady and went away. Now she finished. She realized it's time to go back to work. She finished taking her, her coffee and now she, put, she opened her bag to put her magazine. When she opened her bag, she found her cookies there. The whole pack she had bought, she found it there. What does that mean? Whose cookies were these? <laughs> they were whose cookies? We take for granted that everything we have is ours. It is not ours. It is God who owns everything. Father, we thank you. We honor your name. Thank you for the message you put in my heart. I've shared it. May it be a blessing and a challenge to each one of us.
but Lord, we should have gratitude as we thank you for the many things you have done for us. You have been so faithful. We have been faithless. Forgive us, Lord. Give us a new beginning from this day that we shall not lose an opportunity to say thank you for all what you have done for us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.